You are listening to episode 20 of the EU Startups Podcast. Today with Peter Windeshofer, who co-founded Refurbed, which is one of the world's fastest growing online marketplaces for refurbished products. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the EU Startups Podcast. While we usually publish new episodes in a two weeks rhythm, this episode comes just one day after our interview with Phil Libin, kind of to make up a bit for the longer period of time you had to wait previously for a new episode. Also, if you are a travel-related startup, I quickly wanted to remind you that on October 31st, we have the application deadline for our Travel Startups Pitch Competition, which will be held at our Future Travel Summit on November 24th. If you would like to apply, just go on futuretravel.com for further information. Speaking about upcoming events, if you are interested in learning about the most promising healthcare innovations of 2021, don't miss the grand finale of the EIT Health InnoStars Awards tomorrow. It's a first-class talent competition in healthcare for startups from Central, Eastern and Southern Europe by EIT Health InnoStars. Even though they come from different regions, all finalists have something in common. They all have the potential to revolutionize the healthcare industry and impact the future of medicine. The event will be broadcasted live at BioEurope's virtual event tomorrow on October the 27th from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Don't miss the pitches and the announcement of the winners, which you can follow on the Facebook page of EIT Health InnoStars as well. And now, without further ado, let's check jump right into today's interview. Today I'm excited to welcome Peter Windeshofer as interview guest for the EU Startups podcast. Peter is a co-founder of Refurbed, the fastest growing online marketplace for refurbished products in the German-speaking world. The Vienna-based startup sells renewed, renewed phones, laptops and tablets, which are up to 40% cheaper and 100% more environmentally friendly than their brand new counterparts. Most recently, Refurbed has raised over 45 million in a Series B funding round, and I'm excited to learn about the future plans of the company. Peter, thank you so much for taking the time and welcome to the EU Startups Podcast. Thanks, Thomas. It's really great to be here. All right. So your aim is to become the Amazon for refurbished products in Europe, if I understand that correctly. Um, could you uh, take us back in time into the very beginnings and uh, tell us a bit about the initial idea, uh, what might have changed over time and what refurbed is today? Sure. Mm -hmm. So it actually, it all started with a, a personal problem, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself um, crashed my phone. I needed a new one. Um, and I actually did buy a brand new one because I didn't want to buy a new phone every year because of sustainable, sustainable, sustainability reasons, mm -hmm. because it's very harmful for the environment. And at the same time, I also didn't want to spend more than a thousand years for a new iPhone. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for different options. And back then it was basically the only option to buy a used phone through, you know, these peer to peer platforms that you have in every country. Mm -hmm. So I did that, bought it. After three months, the phone didn't work anymore. I always didn't have an invoice, didn't have warranty. And I had the same problem again, right? But I just you know, lost a few hundred euros on the phone. And so I said, hey, this, it can't be that there is no other option out there than to either buy it new or buy it used. And that's when I came up with the, the idea of refurbished um, of building a marketplace for refurbished products because I knew that these products existed when I was studying in uh, San Francisco in the US where refurbished products are actually something very normal. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at the market in Europe and I realized, hey, there is a lot of supply, but there's basically no platform where I can actually buy the products. And this is when I said, hey, this makes a lot of sense. Let's do something about it. Um, and got in touch with my two co-founders, Killian, uh, who I knew from my um, master's degree when we started together in Shanghai, who was actually working for Amazon in the same field already. Um, and uh, Jürgen, my, my third co-founder, uh, who is our CTO and is programming genius. And the three of us said, hey, let's do something about that. And we really saw the need for refurbished electronics 
in our future, right? We all know climate change is a very big topic and it's not mm-hmm. going to go away. And we need to change the way we consume as a society. And for us, reusing the stuff we already have just makes a lot of sense. And that's why we found it refurbed. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And marketplaces uh, can be very tricky to start and grow because you both have to manage uh, the supply side and you also have the um, demand side ready, uh, have to get it ready. So what were your um, biggest challenges when uh, starting and growing refurbed uh, in the refurbed marketplace? And uh, do you have any advice for other founders who are building marketplaces? Yeah, you have to right. It's, it's very, very tricky mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because of this chicken and egg problem, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So what we did is we we managed to convince a couple of merchants from our vision and story that said, hey, sell your products for us, right? Trust us. We, we're going to build a company. We're gonna be, it's going to be great. But at the same time, we're not going to have a lot of users for the first six months. And so we managed to convince a couple of these guys, put them all on one platform. And then with having a first set of, of offers, we managed to get the first users, And with these first users, the first sales came in, merchants were happy. They put more stock on the platform. With more stock, we got more users. And so this, you know, it's basically this cycle between supply and demand growth mm-hmm. is something that we managed pretty well. And that helped us to kickstart actually the whole company very easily because we managed to convince a first few merchants to actually sell the products on the platform. So this Initial start is, I think, what is really important to have to get the growth going. As soon as you're in growth mode, everything's become, everything becomes much more easy. Mm-hmm. So since you started the company in 2017, you grew really a lot. And I think now you're over 120 um, people. Uh, and I'm wondering, how do you manage such a fast team growth um, while still making sure that uh, you have a good and healthy company culture? Um, do you do anything uh, to um, make sure that the company culture um, stays um, uh, great and that everyone is motivated? Yeah, it's, it's an extremely important topic, um, especially since Corona, um, basically half the people that we hired were actually never really in the office. Mm-hmm. Well. So it's, it became extremely difficult to do that. However, I think we managed to do it quite well. And the reason for that is basically um, a three-step approach. The first one is, of course, to hire people who have a personality that fits to your company culture. Mm-hmm. We are very, very picky when it comes to hiring, not only because we want to hire the best people, but we actually want to hire the right people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we have a, an acceptance rate of only 0.5% of all applications, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, wow. this is very, very low. Mm-hmm. So first step, hire the right people. Second step is to actually onboard them in a very structured and let's say, you know, controlled way. So what we do is we actually designed a, an on- onboarding program that takes two weeks where they run through, you know, every single department, get to know a lot of people in the company, um, really understand how we as a company work, what is important for us, what are, you know, key principles. And we obviously also talk a lot about the culture and the values of the company. Mm-hmm. And then the third element is that we really try to practice what we preach as founders as leaders in the organization and really live up to our values um, and also try to showcase the values as often as possible. For example, we have a, a monthly town hall meeting where everybody's present. And in, in each of these meetings, we um, showcase one value that we have mm-hmm. and also award a, a role model of the month where we you know, showcase the behavior of one person in the company that, you know, had a particular behavior that really corresponded to one of the values that we have in the company and um, showcase them in front of everybody in mm-hmm. this town hall and say, Hey, you know, this uh, guy did that or this or that. Um, and that was really, that's really something that people really liked and that makes it very tangible for people to understand how we actually work and how we want to work. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And Did your um, approach to remote work and flexibility change um, since the uh, pandemic started? And do you think that uh, remote elements and flexible um, uh, working setups will continue to play a role uh, in in the refurb team in the future? Or will you go all back to the office as soon as everything is uh, very normal again? 
yeah, yeah of course it changed a lot yeah and mm-hmm. we were always you know very flexible also with home office and, and working hours now we actually have a completely flexible system where you can decide where you want to work from and and how, when you want to come to the office mm-hmm. and we have uh, the different teams with different setups some teams come to the office regularly some teams are actually uh, remote right now mm-hmm. um, and we're actually working on a on a new solution that is also future proof right now that we're gonna uh, probably shift towards in the next three months mm-hmm. okay and how's the international internationalization of preferred going so far um, and uh, what are the plans regarding internationalization for the coming future um, so there may be two elements that are interesting on, on interna- internationalization mm-hmm. first one is as a company and as sort of our employer base is very international ready uh, I think 50% of our people are actually not from Austria, as we have a very international team. And that actually enabled us to go into new markets very quickly. So we started up in, in Austria and Germany, um, expanded already to Italy, Poland, um, and Ireland, um, and going to do another two or three markets at the end of the year, because our business model allows us to go into markets very quickly. Um, as a marketplace, you know, we have merchants on the one hand side, and these are all professional merchants that sell their products actually EU-wide. So if you go into a new market, we actually go there with all of our supply. And so that's obviously great for us because we don't have the chicken and egg problem again in every new market, but we actually go there with a very strong supply base. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, social and environmental impact startups are on the rise and uh, they might have a harder time sometimes to raise funding or to grow um, Do you have any advice uh, specifically to uh, social environmental impact startups regarding fundraising and growth? Do you think there are some differences compared to purely monetary driven businesses? Yes, I think it depends on what you what you want to achieve as a, as a founding team. Mm-hmm. If you if you can connect your impact to strong financial success, which is luckily the case for us, because the bigger we become as a company, the better it is actually for the planet. Then you can actually focus really on on driving financial success uh, and showcasing that to investors. Um, and for us, what has always been very important is that we clearly say, "Hey, our mission is to really make refurbished products part of our future, and be very impact driven as a company and as a mission." But at the same time, we we're always able to showcase that and you know confirm that also with high growth and and great financial numbers. Mm-hmm. And so the combination of having an impact-driven mission and having very strong uh, financials mm-hmm. is something that investors really like. So if you're building a company right now, make sure that you can address both things, right? Obviously, the mission is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. But if your mission requires you to raise a lot of capital, you really need to think about how you to make the company attractive for investors. Um, and there, unfortunately, it's still the old same rules, right? It's super important to grow quickly, uh, have a strong unit economics, um, have a strong team. And if you have that in place, then the mission is most of the time, unfortunately, more a nice to have an add-on mm-hmm. than anything else. The investment decision is still mostly based on the financial topics then rather than the impact topic. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so you recently landed over 45 million in Series B funding. Um, and I was wondering, what are your, your plans with that uh, big amount of fresh capital? And um, did you uh, really feel the need to kind of raise that uh, big amount now because uh, you think now is the time to grow? Or um, was was the alternative option maybe to um, uh, to grow organically? Or um, so, so basically, why now? Why such a big amount? And what are your plans with it? Yeah, it always comes down to, to our mission and actually the, the amount of time that we think we have to, to make it happen. Mm-hmm. But climate change is something, is I think the most pressing topic we have as a society and it's already so advanced and I think much more advanced than most people actually see and understand. Mm-hmm. We really need to change the way we consume now, right? We don't have time to wait for another five or 10 years. We have to change it now. And that's why we want to grow as soon as possible, as fast as possible and make sure that we reach as many people as possible. And for that, we need capital. We need capital to, to share our story and share our, our uh, vision 
to more people and to reach more people. And for that, we need to, to raise capital. Uh, and that was the motivation behind it. Um, and luckily, we were able to um, talk to really good uh, investors and attract top investors and close the round. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and you will probably invest in marketing, um, team growth, uh, and internationalization then, I would assume, or? Exactly. Yeah, we want to expand into new markets. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to launch Sweden quite soon, actually. Um, mm -hmm. oh, cool. And through that, we want to reach more and more people. Obviously, if you look at the German and the Austrian market, there's still a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. So we also continue growing there, investing highly in marketing there. Um, and then the other thing is, of course, we will increase the team quite significantly. Mm -hmm. right? We have around 120 people. We want to hire another 100 people in the next year. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot, obviously also a big investment in the, on that front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in the beginning, we talked about uh, the impact of COVID-19 uh, that, that it had on your team um, and on your workflow. Uh, but what did the pandemic have uh, an impact on, on your business model? Like, um, did, you, did you feel you sold more uh, electronic products um, because of the pandemic or less? Or was there some kind of disruption uh, for you guys? So we had a bit of a, of a mixed impact in the short term at the very beginning of the of the pandemic in the first lockdown in you know March April uh, 2020 mm -hmm. we had a massive growth in a few categories like laptops like desktop screens and desktop mm -hmm. computers mm -hmm. because people needed the equipment for the home office mm -hmm. right so it was a massive boom um, that was gone though for after after a couple of weeks um, and then. You know, sometimes it was, was quite tricky because it was limited supply in the market because of because of Corona. Uh, but overall, I would say we we benefited from from Corona from a from a business growth perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. But the benefit was also not that huge at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do you see refurbed in the next four or five years in terms of company size and impact? Yeah. So our big goal is to bring one refurbished device into every household by 2030. Mm -hmm. which means we have another nine years to go. Um, but that also means in five years, we need to be a very big company. Right? We, mm -hmm. we believe that we can reach a lot of people um, and do this in, in many different countries. At the same time, we also want to offer many different categories, not only smartphones and laptops and tablets, which is our focus right now, but also other electronic um, devices and go even beyond electronics um, to really enable everybody to buy sustainable products from us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you are based in Vienna. Um, what is your feeling about Vienna as a um, city to start and grow an international startup? And have you ever considered relocating to another place like Berlin, London, or Silicon Valley? Or do you feel you can reach your full potential while being based in Vienna? It's actually something that we discussed quite a lot when we started the company. Um, <laughs> But we actually always wanted to stay in Vienna because it was great for us as a starting place because we were the local heroes quite quickly. A lot of people knew us in Vienna from basically day one, which means it was quite easy for us to actually hire top talent. Mm -hmm. um, this is getting a bit more, a bit, a bit trickier right now because we are you know, getting in a, in a stage as a company where we are one of the biggest e-commerce companies actually in Austria. So there, there's not that much talent anymore in Austria that we can hire. But at the same time, with COVID and with remote remote uh, working modes, it has also become easier to actually access talent uh, from across Europe. And so actually leveraging that um, and hiring a very international team. But we want to stay in Vienna with our with our home base because uh, it's a great city. We really like it here. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so another uh, European... Um, success story in the field of uh, sustainability um, electronics uh, is the Berlin-based company Grover, uh, who's kind of renting uh, electronics. And um, I was yeah. wondering just now, um, spontaneously, um, did you guys ever consider um, adding like a, a rental aspect um, to your um, platform, to your offering? Or um, is that something that's clearly not on the table? Yeah, yeah, we also tried that. Um... But we don't think that is the that it's the best mode for most customers mm -hmm. because most of the time it's actually just a lot more expensive if you rent it than if you buy it and use it for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. We believe that we want to use devices for as long as possible and not 
you know, switch devices multiple times a year even because it was just not very sustainable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we believe that our customers should use the devices for as long as possible. And then if it breaks, or if they need a new one for whatever reason, then they should come uh, to us again and buy another one. But we don't want to make people use electronics even shorter than they already do. Mm-hmm. Understood. Okay, so Peter, you have a lot of um, money sitting in the bank and uh, you guys are hiring massively right now, I assume. So for everyone who's listening and who would like to work um, at Refurb, uh, what's what's the best um, way to, to apply? What's the best way to learn about the open positions and in which areas are, are you currently uh, hiring um, uh, most most strongly? Yeah, uh, we actually hire in pretty much every department. Okay. Uh, from marketing to finance, product development, engineering, customer service, merchant relations. Uh, I think we have open positions everywhere. Mm-hmm. I think we have 40 or so open positions right now. The easiest thing to do is just go on our website and go on a job section and um, look at the pro- at the jobs you like and then apply through the website directly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um We have a very straightforward hiring system, a very, very fast. Um, so, you know, it would be great to have as many applications as possible. And mm-hmm. we're looking forward to finding more people who want to change and save the world together with us. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, Peter, thank you very much for your time. That's it. Um, it was very great talking to you. Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. All right.